Hello again from Paris. Uh, this is Ghassan Abu Alfar from Memorial Sloan Catering Cancer Center in New York. Uh, what a great pleasure to be here to actually introduce uh, for the first time the Emerald 3, which is a randomized clinical trial for the combination of chemoembolization plus checkpoint inhibitors, specifically dorvalumab and tramilumab, plus of course lenvantinib as well. Uh, this is a very important study because for the first time we're going to see what a combination of a local therapy like chemo mobilization, plus at the, at the checkpoint inhibitors being dervalumab and trimumab, plus of course the role of the tyrosine kinase inhibitor slash anti-VEGF being the lenvatinib. Uh, this is study is still ongoing, we're going to see where it takes us and uh, hopefully we'll have some great output after really we attempted very much to combine systemic therapy plus local therapy sadly to a negative impact. So. Where does this stand in regard to the whole story of HCC? No doubt it's been fascinating. Here at ESMO, we heard about plenty of material, a lot of learning points. If anything, the anticipated LEAP002 study of the pembrolizumab plus lenvatinib versus lenvatinib was negative. And uh, it's an awakening call for us about what do we combine with what? And again, this brings me back to the Emerald 3 because we argued right from the beginning, almost 10 plus years ago, that you need the checkpoint inhibitor as a driver with the key mobilization rather than just the TKI. Let's see how we can do with the triplet, all of it in the Emerald 3. Add to this, it's very important to remember also, there were negative results, but they were very important results. Now we know what sorafenib can and cannot do. 15 month median survival, that's all what it can contribute to. That's why we're not surprised retrospectively within the context of the Emerald 3 about the TACE2 negative study, the ECO 1208, and uh, the SPACE study that they were negative. Sorafenib has a limited effect per se. Sadly, it brings a very important point though for us. As we know, the highest incidence of HCC in the world, still one of the two corners is in the continent of Africa, where believe it or not, 84% of the patients based on work that we have reported before, and you've seen it at Aortic, 84% of the physicians have only access to sorafenib. Time to really think in a positive way rather than just saddening ourselves about moving all those great therapies to Africa for that.